Okay, so this screencast is about scientific notation. Now, scientific notation exists for scientists especially to write really, really big numbers and really, really small numbers um, in a way that's easy to calculate with. And you can actually multiply these things and divide these things and do a lot of easy stuff with them that would be kind of difficult uh, without it. But for our purposes, we just want to know how to write things in scientific notation. So let's go over how you can go back and forth with scientific notation. First thing is if I had a really, really big number like 3,140,000. Uh, if I wanted to write that into scientific notation, how would I do that? Well, it's really quite simple. What I'm going to do is first off, my decimal points at the end here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make my number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to move my decimal until I have a number that's between 1 and 10. So I move my decimal one spot, but I don't have a number to the left that's between 1 and 10. And I keep moving it until I get there. Now I get here, and I have a 4 to the left, which you might think is between 1 and 10. But really, I have 314 here. So I'm still not between 1 and 10. So I have to go two more spots. When I go two more spots, then I have a number 3.14 that is between 1 and 10. So I write that down. Now, the last part of scientific notation, writing stuff in scientific notation, is to count the number of spots that you moved your decimal. So I count. I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is times 10 to the positive 6 power. The reason why the power is positive in this case is because my my number is greater than 10. If my number was less than 1, my number would it'd be a negative power. Like, for example, if I had this, 142. And remember how we, I've taught you to read these. You put a 1 underneath your decimal, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 underneath each number. So it's 142 hundred thousandths. So 142 hundred thousandths. How could I change that in a scientific notation? Same thing. I'm going to move my decimal until I get a number between 1 and 10. And I now have a number between 1 and 10, 1 and 42 hundredths. So this is 1 and 42 hundredths. Now I count the number of spots I've moved my decimal. I moved it 1, 2, 3 times. But the number is less, my original number is less than 1. So this is a negative power, so this is times 10 to the negative third. Remember, this is all based on the principle of our powers of 10, which we talked about last week, that 10 to the first was 10, 10 squared was 100, and so on and so forth. And 10 to the 0 was 1. Turns out that continues into the negative numbers. We didn't talk about that last week, but that's why this works here. I can also change things from scientific notation into standard form, which is a regular number. For example, if I had 4.32 times 10 to the fourth, I would do the same thing I've done except reverse. I would write down my number, 4.32, and then I would move my decimal. In this case, I'm moving it four spots. But, keep this in mind, my number is greater than 10. So I've got to move it to the right because I have a positive power because my number is greater than 10 because it's a positive. So I move it 1, 2, 3, 4. That's my new decimal point. So that's my new decimal point. In these two empty spots, I put zeros in. So that turns out to be 43,200. And last but certainly not least, I can do negative powers the same way. If I had 4.64 times 10 to the negative fifth, it's the same thing. I just write down my decimal, 4.64, 4.64 hundredths. Move my decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because remember I'm going left because my number has to be less than 1 because I have a negative power. Drop zeros in every empty spot. Keep in mind this is where my decimal goes. So I end up with 0 0.000464 or 464 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions. So 464 ten millions. And that's how you do scientific notation.